So, hey, if you caught this part of the video, you've got the live unedited edition of Home Gadget Geeks. If you're joining us, first of all, if you're joining us live, congratulations for a two-hour time delay. <laughs> we'll say, Veronica, we'll say it was a rain delay. How's that sound? That, that's perfect. Well you're acquainted with that. Yes. So yeah. a two-hour <laughs> rain delay tonight. And, of course, for a lot of our listeners are here in the Midwest or East Coast just because we, we normally are on at 8 p.m. Central, and that's a great time for them to listen. But many of you, they don't care in Australia. They don't care. So, Renny, by the way, Renny, thank you. Uh, I told Veronica the story about how you recommended – uh, Veronica for this and uh, was was uh, very pleasantly surprised when you said yes. So Veronica, thanks for again. And you know, Renny, there is a, a quite a burgeoning um, uh, bot scene in Brisbane, especially uh, right now. So that's uh, if if you if you haven't been acquainted with any of those folks, there's a good number of people I know that are working on bots in that area. And in fact, I had a call with uh, one of the teams out there working on a project called Code Bots um, this afternoon. That was pretty cool. So and one of my my one of my engineers um, is in. In Perth, which I know is not nearby Brisbane, but but you know, same country. <laughs> yes, same country. It's just about two thousand miles away. Right. <laughs> I've had a lot of great Australia interactions recently. So I bet. It's been, yeah, I bet. Yeah, we Australia is really easy to reach, and you probably experienced this when you were doing this a lot live. Is the time zones are really in favor for. If you're on in the evenings mm -hmm. here in the U.S., it really catches mid afternoon there in Australia, so that works out well. Yeah. We do when I do my enterprise podcasting at work. I come in late, so I'll come in at ten or eleven or midnight to do a show in India or in Singapore wow. or in Sydney to do it in their local time. So mm -hmm. we we've done uh, we've done them that way as well. But you're uh, a better person than I am. Very, <laughs> I will but not. I just never sleep. <laughs> I just never sleep. That's what the, impresses me is that you're always doing like you'll do this show and you're like, oh, sorry, I got to drive into the office. And I'm like. I'm ready to hop into bed and you're about ready to Seriously. start another podcast. Your voice well, holds up for four shows a day. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> looks like our sound check is good out there. Um, Renny says he'll check it out once I explain what a bot actually is. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> gonna need, Veronica, we're going to need a little bit of like bots for dummies. Um, I'm hoping you're ready to kind of bring us up to speed and then talk a little bit about what you're doing. I hope, sure. I hope that's okay. Good. Good, because I, I did a little bit looking, and I'm familiar, I am most familiar with the bots that live in Skype at this point. And have well, found, that's your, you're filling out a space that I'm not too familiar okay, with, so okay. we'll be able to, to yeah, add to each some, other's knowledge base. There's some interesting things they're doing, and then I kind of want to hear the interesting things that you guys are doing as well. So, cool. So, all right, we're right at the top of the hour, not that that matters. But guys, if you're in the chat room, again, uh, thanks for joining us and for uh, making it through the delay. I appreciate that, uh, Gavin, Ken, Drashna, Mike, Peter, Scott, Rennie, and – oh, that's you, Mike. We here. <laughs> hey, Nathaniel made it out tonight. So maybe it's late enough that uh, we could squeeze him in. So good deal. Veronica, I have about 15 or 20 guys that come out every week, which is great. Our audience size is perfect in the sense that I don't get any trolls. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Except it's for when we took it to Blab for one night. That only oh, happened once, yeah. right? <laughs> did you did you live through Blab? Did you ever I did. I did a show on oh, I I did. I was a guest on someone's show on Blab once. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So that was that was the extent of my of my <laughs> Your Blabness. Yeah, my blabby, blabby nature. Yeah. It was interesting. And we the tried it too. Was it cool. yeah. Yeah. The platform was cool. Yeah. It was just it we got spammed pretty hard. So we got some porn spam, which was Ooh. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, the, we've been doing this for six years using kind of this framework, and I have never had a problem with chat wing or the chat room or somebody flaming in there. We just have a, a great group of individuals. So there's something about that. You know, I thought if I ever get any, if I get too big, you start, and you probably experienced that, Techzilla, and some of those things that you did where, because did you guys, you didn't do, you didn't try to do a chat room, or did you in your no, were. we did we did one or two like live shows, but primarily we were we were live to tape. We were not okay. not yeah. not. Live we weren't show. trying to do it that way. And it did was you harder with Twit when I did Twit stuff? It was all live. Yeah, he's Leo's all live. Did you work with Molly Wood when in any of those situations? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for when Buzz Out Loud when I was at CNET, okay. that was my first job. I was a producer on on Buzz Out Loud, and then I became a co-host. Yeah, she's doing great stuff too. Let me just say, uh, part of my job at Gallup is I oversee our college and high school internship programs. And so we're really trying to get more women into tech. And so just mm -hmm. thanks for being a great example. Oh, of, of course. It's, yeah, it's super important, you know, with a 7% national average in computer science programs around the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it's tough. Uh, we just started our high school internship program and I have 20 students and nine of them are ladies. Yeah. And so that's actually pretty good. Nine out of 20. That's pretty great. We were kind of pumped. Not quite 50, 50, but we're pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. That's about awesome. as close as you can so, get. Yeah. We're, we're pretty excited about it. So thanks for being a great example out there. They, they need to see that stuff for sure. So, okay. Um, I have a little intro that I'm going to do. I'll introduce Mike. I'm going to introduce you. We'll do a little chit chat and then we'll just uh, jump into bots. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for, again, thanks for coming on. This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 313, recorded on June 8th, 2017. Here at Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios. Here in a late, actually, Bellevue, Nebraska, we've moved the show out two hours. Mike, are you holding up uh, post two hours? I haven't. I haven't. You're not going to turn into a pumpkin or anything, are you? I, I'm. I'm hanging in there. It's that time of season where you turn your sprinklers on because we've had that heat for the oh, past yeah. like few days, and being out in the sun will just always take it out of you. But today I stayed out of the sun. I'm like, I got to be up late tonight, so I stayed out of the sun just so I could. Nice. Uh, yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you, and I appreciate the chat room staying late with us tonight. But of course, we uh, we post a show with world class show notes each week out at the Average Guy. Dot, got, uh, dot TV. Don't forget, I'm having trouble talking. That's it's kind of it. Maybe <laughs> late, or I have too much caffeine in my system. One of the two. Just a couple of reminders uh, before we jump in here. We've gone completely commercial free out on YouTube. So if you uh, haven't joined the YouTube channel, subscribe to it. Um, head out there. The link is going to be in the show notes to it. And we've turned off those pesky uh, ads inside YouTube, so you can watch everything commercial free. We've done that as well on Spreaker. So on the audio side, and I, and many of you are still watching or listening, I should say, live on Spreaker. We get 10 or 15 of you each week. Appreciate you doing that. I shut the advertisements off on that. If you want to support the show, jump over to theaverageguy.tv. There's a Patreon link there that if you want to do it that way, one or $5 plans will get you in for a month. A couple new ones this this uh, month, and I appreciate you guys doing that as well. It's a great way to support the show. Then don't forget to use the Amazon affiliate link that we're using for the Average Guy Tech Scholarship Fund. So remember, you support that link, you buy it through Amazon, we buy stuff for you to test and try, and then you come on the show and you report it. That way we get fair reporting on what we're doing. It's back, and I think it's working. And Mike, I made a whole 86 cents last month. You know how it is, us getting that well, stuff. Well, and it's hard, too, because we can't bookmark the link anymore. You know, right. it's, it's one more step. They, they made it a little bit harder for us. So well, the Amazon it'll, it'll take YouTube. a little bit longer to get people into the new groove of how to to get in there. No, it's good. Yeah. The, the numbers are good now. So good. Well, our guest tonight, uh, Veronica Belmont, is joining us from sunny, I'm sure, and maybe foggy uh, San Francisco. Veronica, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. And yes, it is. Uh, we are having a rare bout of a summer rain, which doesn't happen very often. But today we actually got some precipitation. So that was nice. Well, that's good. Well, you guys got a ton of rain earlier, right? This winter was kind of record setting. Put the put the reservoirs back in condition Bring and all that on. good stuff. I'll take it. I love yeah. it. I went skiing. It was fantastic. Yeah, I like the precipitation is always welcome here. Yeah, San Francisco is great, uh, a great city, one of my most favorite cities to go out to. And of course, I grew up in the Bay Area, in the San Francisco Bay Area, down in San Jose. My dad always called San Francisco the tourist trap. He would just <laughs> tourist trap. Now, he grew up, he was born and grew up there and moved down to the Bay Area, worked for IBM for, for 35 mm -hmm. years. So I was a kid, I grew up in the Bay Area, you know, just loved it. But I'll let you guys have it. Uh, it's really nice living in Nebraska. My commute's 15 miles and it's like 10 minutes to get to yeah. work. So Ooh. it's, yeah, could you imagine? It's pretty sweet. So Veronica, thanks for coming on. I will say thanks to Joe Thomas as well. I don't know if Joe will listen, but Joe's a good friend of mine from my Oracle days out there. And Joe gave me the thumbs up when I asked you and you said yes. So thanks for coming on. And thanks for Rennie for suggesting you as well. We appreciate you having on. It takes a village. On. You're right. <laughs> it, it does indeed. Well, hey, let's get a little bit on your bio just really quick so folks kind of know who you are today. Currently, you're working at GrowBot and doing the bot stuff. We're going to talk about that uh, here in a second. In your, at your about.me, it says you're an admin at, at BotWiki, BotMakers, BotZine. Am I pronouncing that right? BotZine, like magazine. Zine. Oh, yes. got it. BotZine. Got it. FemBots. You're the startup advisor for Daily Drip, Storium, Public Forge and more. You're a board member at about.me. I thought I was crazy, Veronica. How do you find all this time to be a part of all this stuff there? Because I know the Bay Area is moving, but how do you find all the time to be a part of all those things? Oh, sleep is for the week, my friends. No, no, it's 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 really not so bad. I mean, most of those things are, are kind of passive involvement, like 
for example, bot makers and, and bot wiki, which are part of the same group, the same organization. Um, we just, you know, that, that I, I, I admin that. So that's, it's not a, a terrible ton of work. Um, I just pop in there and make sure everything's running smoothly and that nobody is, is spamming uncontrollably, which does tend to happen. Um, and then, you know, about that, maybe we meet every quarter uh, and kind of go over how things are going there. And yeah, Growbot is my, my day job. And otherwise I do uh, podcasting uh, in the evenings. So that's, that's kind of my, my, my nighttime hours are so, filled up right here. So if folks were to find you right now from a podcasting standpoint of what you're currently, the work that you're doing right now, what, what, what where would we send them or, or, or what's your, where would we find you? Every week on Mondays, I'm a correspondent on Daily Tech News Show with Tom Merritt. Um, and we go over the, the tech news of the day and talk about the events and, and products and, and all the stuff that's happened in the week past. Um, and then also Sword and Laser. Also with Tom Merritt uh, is my sci-fi fantasy book club. That's how I know Joe Thomas, who introduced us. And uh, so that's uh, every other week or so, uh, depending on whether or not we have author interviews in that space. And I'm also working on a massive podcasting project right now that I can't talk about just yet, unfortunately. Um, it's going to be launching on June 26th. Uh, so if you check out my Twitter, twitter.com slash Veronica, uh, you'll hear about that uh, hopefully very soon. No, that's awesome. So we'll we'll follow that for sure. Glad to hear you're still working with Tom. And Tom's been in the podcasting business. He was another guy that mm -hmm. I followed years ago when I first started podcasting myself. And you know that whole this whole industry has kind of grown up together as we think about all those things that you guys have done in the Bay Area. And of course, it's exploded around the country as we think about uh, you know Boston and Austin and Atlanta and what's coming out of the Bay Area and Los Angeles and and even Omaha, Nebraska. We've got Mike and I could probably round up a, a dozen or so podcasters here in the Omaha area. So thanks for kind yeah. of being a pioneer on that as well. You were out early and I mentioned in the pre-show uh, before we really started recording, thanks for all the work that you do to encourage women to be involved in tech because that's a big deal. And, and oh, thank uh, you. we, we want to see more. We need more developers writing code. Yes. yes. We just need more more bodies developing code. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> if you even saw how hard it is to hire good developers sometimes just because they're so in demand. Uh, it's hard to find, find people sometimes, especially yeah. around here. We've gone to growing our own. So I've I've started a high school program. We allow freshmen to come in and could spend four years with us learning code on the weekends. And um, and then I've even thought as like, could I take this back to junior high? I haven't quite oh, done that yet. You but, should uh, though. That if I, if I had something like that as a young person, I, my career, you know, I, I, I have no regrets for, for the path that my career took. Like I, I loved all the amazing projects I worked on, but I didn't even really know that computer science was a thing I could do for a living until I was already well into college. Um, I, I, you know, I took very early, I, I did take computer courses in school, but I never had anyone encouraging me me to go into that space. And my friends weren't really into it. We loved computers, but it just never occurred to me that that is what I could have done. I, maybe I was just way too focused on audio, which is what I wanted to do. Um, so yeah, it was, I, I, I wish there had been more of that uh, in, in, in my time. Yeah. Well, there's some great examples and we just encourage you guys. I think of Molly Wood. We mentioned, I asked if you knew her as well. And mm -hmm. of course, she's a great example. We have had uh, uh, Loria Petrucci on the show here as well. And she's been a great example of, of what you can do. So keep keep doing that. We're going to, I'm going to keep working for the next 15 years or so and see if we can get, we can get more in the space. And awesome. uh, I was mentioning to you, we have nine of our 20 interns of our high school interns are ladies. And Unbelievable. So, it's pretty cool. We're pretty excited about it, uh, but thanks for doing that. Hey, before we dive into bots, uh, About.me is an interesting your board member over there, and that's been an mm -hmm. interesting site, and I think a very well-done site. For me, it's been advantageous because I just host my bio in one place, and, I, and I, can, I can put it anywhere. What's going on over there? What, do you guys, what are they trying to do? What's kind of the most recent thing, and is it, is it working? Is it what they want to do? Is that, is that working? Yeah, well, it's really interesting because they were acquired by AOL a few years ago and then broke back off to be an independent company once again because they wanted to have control over the experience. Um, and I have been a user. I was a, an early beta tester. Um, that's why I was able to get about.me slash Veronica. But now I use my own domain for for the service as well. Um, but it really is just the, to me, it's the, it's the landing page for Veronica on the internet. We have so many disparate sites that we, that we use daily 
today that are all little bits and pieces of our personality, you know, whether it's Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook, it's kind of hard to centralize all that content. Um, so about.me is really the, the way to do that for, for a lot of people. And, and recently they've been going into a heavier focus on freelancers and, and the, the 1099 crowd essentially as a, as a place to store your portfolio and to point to people uh, in your resumes or your portfolios to really get attention for, for freelance work. Um, and I think that's a great perspective uh, because increasingly people are either they have a side hustle or they're going full time towards their passion. I mean, you know this as a podcaster and and Tom did it too. I mean, he went from being a, a regular full time employee to to taking it on his own and becoming a podcaster full time. Um, so we're seeing a lot more people kind of following their passions and making a career out of that. So you kind of need a place where you can point people to that shows everything you're working on uh, as a as a personality on the Internet, so to speak. Yeah, no, I've I've enjoyed it. Mike, have you checked out about .me? Have you ever set up a? I do. There? I keep going back and forth on where I want to use MikeWeger.com. I'm like, okay, about .me. Well, now I can use it as a yeah. podcast repository. Uh, now I want to go back to about .me. I have a I have the paid subscription to about .me, and I keep switching back and forth. I I, I let go. I finally like I had a website. I had a blog forever, and I was like, oh, all my blog stuff. Like, what am I gonna do about it? And I'm like, yes. I just let go. I just added the put the domain to about .me. I'm not even domain forwarding. It's like legit. Like it is Veronica Bell com is my about.me page now. And it was so like freeing. I was like, I don't have to do anything now. I can use all these different sites. I don't have to think about upgrading my WordPress. I don't have to like worry about it. If I want to blog, I'll do it on Medium or whatever else the next new hot thing is going to be if Medium dies. And you know, it's just, it's nice. It's kind of like, <laughs> this is the nerdiest thing I'm going to say today. It's kind of like running all your RSS feeds through FeedBurner. Like, you know, if you put your podcast, if you turn, if you point iTunes to FeedBurner, you can always move around depending on where you're hosting your show as long as you run it through FeedBurner because that link won't change. So that's how I feel about about.me. Yeah. <laughs> See, and then yeah. that's a perfect way to put it because I stopped podcasting, but I still wanted to keep it out there. And then I was vlogging yeah. for a while. That It's like, okay, no, I just need to switch it over and put it there. We're so. busy people. It's it's so easy to set up and, and just, I, I feel like I, I'm you know, like a walking advertisement at this point, but it really is just the easiest way to, to get your stuff online. Right now, right on. I, I found it easy to organize, easy to go back to. So if you want to check out mine about, if you're listening about dot me slash Jay Collison gets you there. I try to do my younger brother's name is John and I steal cause I'm out ahead of him. Oh, okay. Jay Collison long. So he's like, he'll, he'll ping me. Did you get Jay Collison at whatever? And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. I've had it for a year, you know, and he's like, oh, so, <laughs> um, but, but, uh, I've just liked it. It's, it's looks nice. It sets up well. It's just a good place to put everything. Well, Veronica, let's talk about bots. That's kind of what we brought you on here to do. I, uh, I was introduced to the bot space through what Microsoft is doing mm -hmm. through kind of Skype and the, I also live in the enterprise environment and everybody's talking about AI, machine learning and bots. And totally. I understand AI and I understand machine learning, but I don't have a clue about bots. So can you, and I was actually surprised when Rennie said, hey, you should talk to Veronica, uh, Veronica Belmont about bots. I was like, she's gone to bots now. And I so I kind of, yeah. I had to <laughs> pop over and just kind of see what you were doing. But can you give us kind of what you're doing and give us kind of the, you know, bots for dummies? What are you guys trying to do and why bots and, you know, what's there? Sure. Oh, there's a lot to go over, but I think the way I kind of break it down is the future for me of communication is messaging. And I think we've seen that, you know, everybody is using some form of messaging client these days, whether it's Facebook Messenger, whether it's Kick, whether it's Telegram, whether they're using it at work on Slack or Microsoft Teams or Yammer. There's just endless platforms at this point, uh, and they're all kind of vying for our attention. And I don't think email is going to die. I think there will probably be a use for email for the foreseeable I would, future. I will, but I think minimizing the the amount of email that we kind of deal with day to day is 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 a really nice ideal. Um, messaging too has its own problems and concerns, especially in terms of constant notifications. Uh, you really have to figure out how to manage that uh, from the beginning because I, someone like me, I cannot stand the sight of an unread notification. Like I have to clear everything out. If there's a little dot by a Slack team, I got to go look at it. It doesn't matter what time, what I'm doing, got to clear it out. 
and so that that is definitely one of the downsides of this constant messaging void, uh, you know, messaging situation that we've created for ourselves, the opposite of a void. Um, but bots, essentially, if you think of messaging as the new runtime, bots are apps. Um, and so we're they're, they're platforms. And so we're creating software experiences on these new platforms. And they essentially can either work conversationally. Um, Growbot, for example, is a, is a somewhat conversational bot, though we don't currently use any form of artificial intelligence, um, while others are essentially integrations of other SaaS systems that are already in play. Um, so you can say something like, you know, well, just an example of like a, a popular kind of bot that would look like that would be like, like hip chat, for example, I mean, sorry, hip monk has a really great uh, bot interaction for Microsoft teams. Um, so you can book flights and look for hotels. And that's like, it's a really nice experience. And a lot of software companies are, are going that way because they know that employees are spending an awful lot of time on messaging platforms. And instead of needing to constantly context switch from, from application to application, to web app, to messaging, keeping them all in one contextual stream is a really nice way to keep people focused and to keep them in the moment. Um, and it's it's really hard. Context switching kills a lot of time. I mean, it, 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 can, it can take 10 minutes between a context switch to get back on task, um, just in terms of the way our brains work. So for me, it, it makes a lot of sense to to keep it in one environment. Yeah, and I so at work, I do all our social contacts for all. You know, we have about about six thousand coaches around the world, all trying to talk in all kinds of different time zones. That's yeah. why I told you I never sleep because I'm talking to somebody around the world about it. And we go between like, we have a Yammer group, we have a Facebook group, I get messages on email, sometimes they've got my text, you know, they can text me in and yeah, right. although I'm, I'm finding I'm pretty good because I do it all the time. I don't treat them as separate platforms, I kind of can mm -hmm. kind of move, but that's, I mean, not everybody's good at that, right? Not everybody is, you know, they get, you, you get kind of locked in or whatever, and then email is a problem because we're having trouble actually getting email to people, right? With spam filters and some of those things. So when you think about in your, in, in Growbot is primarily, is it mostly Slack that, that you are integrating into or what yeah. other platforms as well? The Slack integration was the first and is still our, our primary focus, I would say. Um, they launched uh, Growbot in 2015, and this was pre-Slack App Store. Um, so it was essentially a custom bot integration uh, that wasn't being vetted by Slack. You had to basically sideload it into Slack. Um, now we're an official Slack app, uh, of course, and we launched on Microsoft Teams back in March. Uh, so that was my primary project probably from October of last year up until currently. Uh, it's still one of my big projects. Uh, and so, yeah, those are the two platforms that we're available on right now, Slack and Microsoft Teams. And uh, we're working to, to kind of figure out what platform is going to be next. Uh, I think, you know, Google's doing a lot of interesting things. Um, there's a lot of opportunity in, uh, I would say, um, oh, Gosh, my brain. It, it's it's not even that late for it's been me. Been a long day. Still, <laughs> Discord. It's been a long day. It's you okay. Know, yeah, Discord, which is a, a primarily uh, gamer focused yeah. uh, social uh, messaging system, has really their features impress me a lot. I mean, it looks like Slack in many ways and functions like Slack in many ways, but I think a lot of teams, uh, even like larger companies are, are looking at that as a potential messaging platform as well. Um, so there's there's just a lot out there. So figuring out what, what kind of place, I mean, we're an enterprise tool essentially. That's really the kind of audience that we're focused towards. So we're not gonna be looking at a Facebook Messenger probably unless we look at Facebook at work. Um, and, and that's more, I'm not sure if that's really what we're what we're going towards, but we'll see. I'm not I'm not closed off to anything at this point. But Facebook's making a run at the at the enterprise. I mean, that's they want to be there. And do you yes. think it can ever be accepted? I mean, this is they're going to have some of this perception problem where people yeah. say Facebook is not for work. I so think they are going to have some perception problems. And I think for me, it would, I haven't used it yet, so I can't speak from experience. I'm just, this is hearsay from people who are using it or, or testing it out. Um, but they say it's a little weird because it, it it's tying your personal and professional together in a way that maybe people are not comfortable with. Um, I think it would be a really great replacement for like an intranet 
up potentially, or like some kind of system for for sorting employees or, or posting messages uh, within a company that's more like a message board as opposed to a, a social chat platform. Yeah, and we're a Skype for Business client. I imagine we'll go to Teams here at some mm -hmm. point as they were trying to, you know, integrating Microsoft services. If you listen to the sales guy, hey, it could be done in a weekend. I mean, in five minutes, actually. You just install this and oh, yeah. then you actually start installing that stuff and it takes weeks, <laughs> months sometimes to get everything integrated. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we've also, uh, we've, I've, I just, as you were talking about all these different messaging platforms, we've also gone on to Voxer uh, recently where my family oh. has moved to Voxer. We were Facebook Messenger for a while and we have a family group on Facebook Messenger, but and that they won't let me out of, by the way, I've tried to leave the group a couple of times mm -hmm. and my wife adds me right back in. And then recently Voxer has shown back up again. That had come out a couple of years ago and and the walkie talkie. Are you familiar with the with the Voxer? No, I haven't so, used it. So it's like walkie talkie. So you can oh, it's, yeah. you push it and you can talk and have these real time conversations or right. it stores the audio for you. So that's I think good. I did use that when it first launched. That's yeah. right. I remember that now. It's it's and it first launched a couple years ago and I thought it was gonna go away. And then somehow my family, my my kids were using it. And I was like, seriously i thought you know, that had just kind of come and gone but the kids it's were so funny how these things sometimes find their niche later in life and yeah. they just somehow they speak to a particular set of people and they find a little home and sometimes that works out really well for the company and that's just what they become um and you know that's i think that's actually kind of wonderful yeah, no, for sure. It's one of those things you just you don't see it coming. Mm -hmm. So inside, so when we think about grow a bot, what's it intended to do? So what what kind of benefit and and why a bot to be able to do that? So Grobot is a, a team recognition tool, essentially. So uh, many employees feel as though they are going without the recognition that they feel they deserve uh, in, in their workplace. Um, it's a huge problem, especially for employee churn and retention rates. Um, it is actually in the top five, if not the top three reasons why people leave their jobs is because they don't feel as though they're being recognized. Um, so we're trying to solve that by making a conversational tool that essentially tracks keywords, uh, praise keywords, keywords, appreciation words like kudos or props or wins. Um, and those are all user customizable. So whoever the admin is, whoever installs the bot is able to go in and customize those. Um, and then we just give a little response back and people can pile on uh, reactions, appreciation reactions. And it, it sounds kind of fun and funny, but it actually has a really interesting impact on the way people work and interact with each other. And for me, I, you know, I was looking for a job for a while and I wanted to do something that I felt would, would have some kind of impact and make a difference. And yeah, we're not, <laughs> we're not like saving children, but we're making people's day to day a little bit better and a little bit more, you know, welcoming or happy. And, and to me, like sometimes that can have a huge impact that can trickle down to the rest of someone's life. You know, if they're happy with their work, if they feel like they're getting recognized, if they feel like they're being appreciated, you know, they, they take that home with them and they, they, they bring that into other aspects of their day to day. And that's, that's pretty valuable for me. Do you feel like though, okay, so it's an automated process. Mm -hmm. Do you have, do, do, does anybody struggle with like, it's not really authentic because it's, I mean, yeah, people have said it, but then the robot is telling me people have said it. Do you, do you get any kind of pushback like that from, from the users? Yeah, I mean, it's all about the team culture. I think for, for some teams, we're an instant fit. Um, some teams have to get used to it or figure out how it works for them. And other teams, it's not going to not gonna work. Uh, and we totally understand that. Uh, that's one of the reasons why being able to customize the responses and the keywords is so important, uh, because you really can go in and kind of dial it in for what your culture already is. Or you can be a little more looking forward and saying, this is what I want our culture to be. And kind of be that champion on your team who's encouraging this kind of back and forth praise. Um, you know, people who are giving recognition oftentimes feel even better than the people receiving it because you you get to you get to make someone else's day. And it's that altruistic feeling that you kind of take away with you. Um, but yeah, yeah, totally. I totally see how people think it might be really cheesy and like, you know, hippy dippy. 
Um, but it works. And we've seen a lot of great traction, uh, especially in large customer service and support teams, uh, because they are just constantly closing tickets or dealing with tough customers or, you know, dealing with something blowing up in their face. And so being able to be recognized for, for that kind of trauma um, really helps make your, your day run a little smoother. And you mentioned that, okay, so like people can pile on. So has there been mm -hmm. an increase in like, other users providing appreciation, recognition after they see the bot. So almost like, well, I wasn't going to say anything, but hey, the bot. And then that kind of reminded me I should maybe say, say good job or something like that. Is there an increased number in other users participating? Yeah. So the bot only responds if someone gives kudos. Um, so, you know, I could say like, you know, oh, okay. Kudos to Mike for for having a really great uh, question on the podcast earlier today, for example. And then Grobot would say, like, you know, cheers to that or something, like that, you okay. know, whatever you said it to be. So you have to take the first step. The bot isn't going to, unless you set reminders. We do offer kudos reminders that you can you can define yourself and say, hey, Grobot, will you remind me to give kudos, you know, every Wednesday at 3 p.m., just a little mental trigger to say like, oh, what, what, what was great this week? You know, what happened that I want to recognize? Um, typically, appreciation works best if it happens immediately, you know, on the spot, like when something goes down. Uh, you know, the further and further you get away from that moment, the, the less it seems to have an impact. Okay. So like you just asked a great question. I'd say kudos, Mike. And then Grobot would say, you know, three cheers or whatever. Okay. And then we would save that kudos and put it on your dashboard. Uh, so for example, your manager could go back and look at it later and be like, oh, wow, that really was a great question that Mike asked earlier. And so it's just essentially, it's data. It's, it's, it's looking at the appreciation data and figuring out who is good at giving appreciation, who's receiving a lot of recognition, who maybe a manager like hadn't noticed, but is being recognized by their team uh, for doing great stuff or helping other people out. So yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how it works. So the bot doesn't respond unless you talk, you you say trigger it with one of the keywords. So that helps with what Jim mentioned earlier, where it's not saying, "Hey, uh, I just landed this big account," and then the bot is the only one that replies back to you before anyone else has said anything, and right. then it's just like crickets. It's it only responds. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah, and though uh, you know, I have been thinking a lot about what an automated process would look like. You know, we right. I, I mentioned that we don't use any kind of AI or or um, anything like that right now, but I'm starting to see trends, and we the team is starting to see trends of the kinds of things that people give kudos for, and so. I can see a future where at some point Grobot will be able to recognize those automatically or ping someone and say, hey, you know, this looks like something awesome happened. Do you want to give Jim recognition for that? And so that could potentially be a little booster, um, a little prep for that to, to, to move it forward. Yeah. So would you plug that into like any analytics, like a sales platform, certain person hits a certain percent and it pings their manager and tells them, is that kind of the idea of almost being proactive yeah. thing, rather than the manager having to sit there and see it in a report and recognize that the bots are doing that work for them? Is that the idea? Uh Totally. Like we okay. could, we could definitely see a situation where we're integrating with uh, other third-party uh, tools. Um, like, for example, if you're doing a lot of uh, commits on GitHub or something, or mm -hmm. closing tickets in Zendesk, like Robot could keep track of that and either alert your manager or or uh, alert your team when when you've hit a certain benchmark. Um, though we don't want it to be like. I don't know if I want it to be so numbers driven, so you know, quantitative. Um, I'd rather it be more come from the heart. Yeah. If that makes well, sense. When you start so. to get those and some people might just start to ignore them, right? Cause mm -hmm. you get them all the time and it becomes, it doesn't become anything special anymore. Like you said, it's not from the heart. It takes we away do, the meaning. We do have a team that does something really fantastic, which is they, they use, they created their own bot that keeps track of their NPS uh, reports from customers. It's a customer support team. So when, uh, when they get nines or tens on their NPS, their customized bot pings their manager and then the manager takes that data and gives kudos to the employees on a basis of like, oh, well, you know, Bob over here, like just got so many amazing customer responses today. Like I really noticed a lot of the tickets were very positive. I'm going to take the time this week to really 
appreciate him in channel for all the hard work he's done. So they've kind of, they've taken it to the next level and, and that's something we'd like to do for people in the near future. Um, but it's it's just amazing how people take technology and, and kind of bend it to exactly how they want it to work. And of course we want it to be easier, even easier for them, um, but it, it shows that we're on the right track. I do like the fact that well, as we were talking about this and it's being a manager, uh, I like to get those alerts myself that, mm -hmm. and then I can kind of filter through them because there, are, there's sometimes when it's not appropriate in the moment, right? And, right. And it and and the the numbers may not mean what we think they mean, and the bot gets it wrong, and then people start piling on for something maybe that wasn't meaningful, but like we just did with Mike. So we just piled on in our chat room what we did for him. Yeah. So Mike, <laughs> I feel this is the best I've felt on one of your podcasts, See? Jim. So I'm you know. The system works. It's I'm usually not awesome. all lovey-dovey and about that stuff, but hey, I, I it, it works. Feels so, pretty you know, good, doesn't it? When, feels when really good. That. But Veronica, like I use, um, uh, we've been using Medium uh, recently. We've just been trying it out to see how mm -hmm. we've been repurposing some of our blog content. But that's pushed me back into our blog, and I've been looking at the numbers oh, every couple of days, and I watch for some of our guest writers who have got really good numbers. And then I send in, we just do it via email because that's for, in our culture, that's still the way we're communicating, right? I'd love right. to we're doing that. We're not, we do some group messaging, but not like we could. But I do send that that mail out to their to their boss, to their manager, to the people around them that are supporting them and then say, hey, great, Al did this and it got so much things here. Then they blast it out. So we've got a great culture of that at Gallup. It works really well. We're old school mm -hmm. doing it with email, but that does, um, work pretty well. You mentioned, um, so you can even tie it in where it's getting the customer feedback. So it can kind of go through because I think that's one of those we, things. That's not something fade, we right? do. Okay. That's not something so we do. That yeah. that's okay. a that was an extra thing that one of our customers yeah, okay. built for themselves. But that's something I'm oh. thinking about a ton. Yeah. No, I think that would be a very because it's hard to fake the customer, right? Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. they're positive or they're negative. Would would it be um well and there maybe there could be some even some applications where if you're starting to see a lot of negative sentiment that could also pop up, right? Are you dealing with just keywords or is there some sentiment analysis being done on the sentences, just keywords? 100% mm -hmm. keywords right now. Okay. No, super, super interesting from that standpoint because it does, I think, create that culture of, of appreciation. And, and you're right. We see this too in all our numbers. You know, we at Gallup, we poll on these things all the time. Yeah. We have an engagement <laughs> you survey. You know a thing or two about numbers. Yeah. Just a few. <laughs> and we know a little, little bit about, about engagement, right? And in one of our engagement surveys, one of our questions is, did I, have I received praise or recognition in the last seven days? Yeah. So your your bot here is mm -hmm. really encouraging that on a more frequent basis. Mm -hmm. But it does right make the assumption that whole organization has to be in Slack or has to be in Teams. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, we do have some organizations where we're, you know, we're a very bottoms up kind of approach. Uh, typically, we get installed on the the larger engineering dev teams or customer sales and support, um, and then that can either that trick. We hope that that trickles up through the chain. Uh, we do do some outreach to you know on the HR executive level as well. Um, when we start to see a lot of really good engagement um, from the bottoms up, um, but that just shows that it's working for us. If we can get if we can get the people who are really impacted by it the most uh, engaged and using the product, then that's that's the best sales tool we can come up with. Yeah. I have other other thoughts when you think about bots and the use of them and what you've seen. Other other great things, whether you guys are doing it or you've just seen it. Mm -hmm. What are some other great examples of stuff that you really like? Um, well, if you're talking about surveys, uh, poly.ai is one of my favorite. Uh, you should definitely check them out. Um, they are a fantastic survey tool. They started out in email as well, um, and they've moved almost completely into the messaging space. They're also on Microsoft Teams and Slack, and a uh, really, really great small team just like ours, and uh, we've kind of come up with them as well. Uh, Statsbot is another one. Uh, Dashbot, there's a lot of bots that actually help with analytics, um, which I think is really great for, for people who are software developers or other bot makers or, or people who are checking out uh, engagement on, on their app or, or web app or product. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that really just helps add a conversational layer to a lot of the, the more typical uh, analytic stuff that's, that's going on that they would typically use like, you know, SQL or, or something like that to, to kind of pull the data from. It seems like with bots today that we're still kind of just responding. We're looking for kind of simple things to happen and then those mm -hmm. bots kind of respond to them. 
do you see, and you're in the Silicon Valley there, are, are you seeing more uh, machine learning or m some of those things coming in and affecting the bots? And, and what are you seeing in that space? Yeah, there's absolutely uh, actually a pretty common misconception that all bots are artificially intelligent or have artificial intelligence. Um, it, that's not the case. Uh, I think it's kind of a, a misnomer in many ways. Um, but increasingly, we are seeing more and more. I, I mean, especially when we have companies like Amazon and Google and Apple kind of trailblazing uh, in, in the general public with those ideas, I, I, I'm still a little bit bearish on, on some of the capabilities of, of artificial intelligence. Um, I think like IBM in particular is doing some amazing, incredible stuff with Watson. Uh, but in terms of customer facing stuff, we're still not quite there yet. Um, I have trouble. Ev I love Alexa and I'm sorry if I'm saying it Oh, She'd heard me. She heard me. She's looking at me right now. <laughs> Alexa, stop. <laughs> Stop, honey. It's okay. Be quiet. Um, Be quiet. <laughs> she's still listening to me. Um, I have this trouble on, on this problem on DTNS all yes, the time, I bet you <laughs> and do. I get yelled at about it all the time. I bet you do. The Amazon. Okay. Oh, and now she's lost her. Now she's died. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So it's the the Amazon Echo and its suite of services uh, is is very advanced, and yet I still have trouble every single day asking simple questions, uh, simple queries, and this is a, a common problem with bots across the board and and things like conversational interfaces like the series and the Amazon Echoes and the Google Homes and you know whatever next is coming out. They have a difficult time sometimes explaining to users exactly how to get the most out of them. Um, something we talk about a lot in the bot space is, is you know, onboarding essentially and directing users about what the bot is capable of, what their domain expertise is. Um, there's been a lot of times when a new bot has come out on the marketplace. I think probably the, the example I use most frequently is Poncho, the weather cat. Uh, Poncho was a, a, a really big launch for Facebook Messenger uh, when it first went live and first launched bots. Um, and it's a, it's a sarcastic, fun little bot that tells you the weather but it's extremely conversational and you you think that you can talk to it about anything. And so you kind of get into these, these conversations where it's not really answering anything correctly the way you want it to, or you ask it for weather in a way that it doesn't know how to parse properly. And so users end up getting very frustrated and Poncho recognized that and immediately went back and, and narrowed the scope of what it would respond to and actually changed their entire interface to be much more uh, button and card driven rather than conversational. And so I think a lot of bots went very big in the conversational space initially and then really, really, really reined it back in and, and narrowed that scope and, and did a much better job of, of onboarding the users to the experience and, and what they were good at. Yeah, there's almost an education that needs to be done at, mm -hmm. the, at the device level because they don't come with instructions. Yeah. And you do, so you don't know. And we almost need, like we, onboarding, I never thought of it with that term, mm -hmm. but we almost need a training where it spends some time... And these things get updated all the time. I think about, I mean, Microsoft is pouring tons of effort into, into Cortana. Mm -hmm. And like there's new things that come out all the time. And I'm a Windows MVP and I have a hard time keeping up with it all. Right. You know? And so you're like, uh, it, would be, it would be awesome if at some point it would suggest, say, hey, you know, I can also do these things for you. And yeah. Be, and be a little more conversational, right? There, you know, uh, the the Echo does not, uh, the Amazon device does not do search very well, right? No. It's, just not, it's not good at that. No. The, 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 the Google device has trouble hearing you when it's playing things, right? It can't, mm -hmm. it's struggling with some of that. Uh, a Cortana will kick you into a web uh, you know, it, when, when you ask a question that doesn't know it, it immediately goes like, to I'm going to show you on Bing. <laughs> yeah, hey, let me show you. And, and so there's sometimes when it's really good, but I think we're still a ways away, right? And, and what I hear you explaining is we're kind of niching down in the bot space. So let's yes. get super niched, super, you know, kind of hyper-focused. And then do you think that will grow out as we get better at it? 
Yeah, I think potentially. And, and just as, as as UI designers and UX designers kind of figure out how people are really using these tools, uh, especially conversationally. I mean, the conversational interface is really, it's so early still. And there's so much to figure out. And the difference between even, you know, typing and speaking is is so much different. Um, there's a lot of work to be done there. And, and one of the things that I'm most excited about for the bot space is the number of Inter interdisciplinary hires, um, essentially. There's been a huge number of people who have been hired at bot startups who are not engineers and who don't come from a technical background. They come from writing backgrounds, screenwriting even, fiction. Um, they have the ability to, to communicate uh, with users in a way that we haven't had to do with in software previously. Um, so it's, it's really bringing a lot of different types of people, a, a much more diverse cast of characters um, are coming into these startups to to really flesh them out and, and make them better tools for a wider range of people. Well, I was just, so the wider range of people I'm thinking, so you're an audio person, you love mm -hmm. audio and then, but the bots nowadays, we kind of made the comparison between, you know, Alexa and Siri, but these chats, these bots are all text-based. I'm thinking, so I work for KPMG. We don't use Slack. We use Skype for business. And I'm like, oh man, this kudos thing sounds really cool. You know, with Growbot, I'm thinking of, we spend... <laughs> way too much already on conference calls and how great would it be <laughs> if there was an audio version that was listening and when someone gave kudos like the bot jumped in and also gave kudos because we spend more of our time on the phone on our in our side of the company um, than anyone else does so almost like a mix of the two kind of customizing like you said for all your different audiences and it would be kind of interesting it would probably drive most people nuts but anything to make a conference call more enjoyable uh i would totally be down for <laughs> well so this is the problem like i couldn't have robot could not jump into that conference call and interrupt you like that would not it would not work te voice versus text it's, it's a Very totally true. different experience like if if you were having an important conference call and and you said great idea boss and robot was like you know <laughs> You're better than ice cream with sprinkles. Your boss would be like, what the F? Like, I don't know how much I would love that, though. But, uh, maybe, maybe, like a, yeah. maybe for your team. <laughs> yeah, maybe like but, a, for your interpersonal, you know. Yeah, there's definitely the use cases are very important. <laughs> or like a, a bot that's listening. So as as mm -hmm. me and my team Keeping are talking, we it, say, yeah. yeah, we say, hey, bot, um, can you schedule that meeting for next week so that we can all recap on this? Or, hey, note that down for something we need to talk about. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. Little bots like that that are always listening, almost a common combination of a bot and something like Siri or a digital assistant. Oh, there is, there, I'm almost certain there is a bot that listens in on conference calls and allows you to take notes. I'm, I'm fairly certain that already exists. I can almost guarantee you it's probably not very good. Okay. Uh, that yeah. is, that well, is, it's, it's much harder to do, right? Yeah. It's the same reason that, you know, Rennie just mentioned for um, call support, right? When you call mm -hmm. in and you get that automated system, it can still be a little wonky when you're having to try, especially the ones that try and do a really good job where you say exactly what you want, explain your problem, and they try and dissect that and figure out where to send your call. Um, they're getting a lot better. Better. It's still really hard. But how crazy do you feel when you're screaming at a robot on the yes. other side of the phone because it won't direct you to the right person and right. you're just going... Representative, oh, representative, representative. <laughs> zero. And what do I need to say to make you don't stop? have an accent? Like, yes. don't have an accent, or you yeah. are, you know, you are screwed. It, it will not, uh, it won't recognize you. Veronica, how is in this space, and you're dealing with a lot of tech space stuff, but. Mm -hmm. How how do you, you you live in Silicon Valley, so you're smart on all things. I live in San Francisco. We don't make, consider we're not Silicon oh, Valley. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. You live in San Francisco. See how yeah. it's, <laughs> it's a little snooty in the Bay Area, by the way. If you haven't if you haven't <laughs> lived or worked out there. No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. Um but <laughs> one of the things uh, I think we gotta get to, you know, you're talking about being able to listen in on a conference call is presence, right? We have to know who's talking too. Yes. And right. do you get a feel we're getting any better at that of knowing who's, it's easy with text. We know exactly because they're authenticated. Do you think we're getting any better at that in the space of being able to listen and hear who it is and, and for the machine to know? Uh, that's hard. I mean, I think, yeah. Uh, you can punt on that, by the way, if you want to. But I'm, I may have to punt on that. <laughs> you know, I think, I think Amazon is probably, I, I think those, those companies, the Amazons and the Googles, I don't know if I trust Apple to be able to do this right away, um, but but Amazon is pretty good at being able to to profile switch. Um, I don't know if they're doing it automatically. I don't know if I say, you know, play my music if 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 she knows uh, it's me and not my husband. Um, 
I, I, I just don't know off the top of my head if that's possible yet. Uh, but their voice, I mean, the voice recognition is is there. The technology is absolutely there. It's just integrating it with the services right. that are that are out there. And what a great opportunity those companies have. Having a device in the home, mm -hmm. our personal devices don't get, I mean, my wife doesn't talk to my phone very often. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the car when she's trying to switch the music when we're on a road trip or something like that. But yeah. when you have a device that's in the house, a perfect opportunity for these companies to learn from that because you do have multiple people talking. Uh, you know, my mom will come over mm -hmm. to the house and she'll even talk to it. So you have a wide gamut and maybe then they can start implementing that across the board, you know, as right. they start to do it. Or, or the Amazon Echo knows that if it's the child talking to not put through any of the purchases <laughs> right. that it tries to add to the cart, for example. I'm going to need that on my dash buttons too. A fingerprint sensor yeah. on, on the dash button. There's some interesting like security and privacy issues therein. I mean, I think um, one of the, one of the, the biggest uh, 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 creators of, of, artificially and I never know if it's artificially intelligent or artificial yeah I, or the reverse um, of, of tools like uh, there was a company called there is a company called pull string um, that made uh, the Mattel Barbie toy that talked back to you and there were some security issues there because it, it kind of came to light that they could potentially hear children's conversations mm -hmm. and be storing those on mm -hmm. you know, on servers somewhere. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of that. And I think, you know, we've already had our first case of, you know, I think it was a murder case that that wanted to pull uh, echo information. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's already a thing. We essentially have these live microphones in our house at any given moment, all of the time. Our these phones can are do listening that. all the time. Our phones are all, listening all, all the time. Our connected devices are listening. You know, it's it's we have live microphones everywhere, and that is that's a crazy feeling. You really have to give up a lot of of that feeling in order to make it work, right? Like we have to yeah. put a lot of trust in these companies that we really, real. I mean, beside the profit motive, you know, if 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 they if we get to a point where we don't trust them, they're not going to make as much money because people are going to stop buying their devices. But we have to trust them in order to get the most out of them too. If we're not syncing our calendars with them, we lose all of that available information. If we're not syncing our Spotify accounts with them, we're not getting that information, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you really have to give up a lot in order to get the, the the widest range of functionality out of a lot of these connected devices. And I think that's something that a lot of people are very uncomfortable with. Is that ever a worry with bots uh, that people think, you know, okay, I'm, I'm having a conversation on Slack, but it's a it's a one on one something I don't want this bot really mm -hmm. in on tracking where admins I mean, of course, you know, if you're in a company setting most of your admins can see what you're talking about anyway, but anyone ever weary of having a bot oh. of listening on the chat? hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, we don't, we don't listen to anything unless, I mean, we don't, I don't go around listening to conversations, Right. but you know, uh, Microsoft teams is very locked down. They are extremely security conscious. Uh, Slack is, is definitely trying to get there as well, especially with their, the launch of grid, which is their enterprise product. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's always a consideration. It's, uh, you know, if someone gives kudos, like I can, I, it's anonymized, but you know, I, that, that information is, is, is on our server somewhere. Um, so it's like, you know, that kind of stuff is, it's, it's definitely worth taking into consideration. We don't use that information for anything nefarious. Um, we just use it to make the experience better, but it's, you know, I mean, that's with any software tool. Right. Veronica, what, how do you, if, so if I was going to build a bot mm -hmm. and I wanted to, I wanted to do what you guys are doing, what's the technology behind that? What do I, what kind of skills do I need to have? What kind of software am I using? Is it super hard or is it harder to sell it than it is to build it? <laughs> <laughs> it's extremely easy to to build a bot. Actually, uh, you know, I, I've used tools like Bot Libre to uh, to create my own Twitter bot. Uh, she's ridiculous. She has these conversations with people. I don't even know what is going on sometimes. And it, it's a very like out of body experience because she has my name and she's got like a funny avatar that it's Veronica Bellbot on Twitter. If you want to go talk to her. Uh, all right. And uh, she's, she's just really weird. She responds to people randomly and just says things. That's kind of like, uh, I don't understand her. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I, I made a Twitter bot. Uh, I, I've trained her. Um, and there's tons of tools out there. There's things like cheap bots done quick. There's uh, um, 
Octane AI is a company that allows uh, brands to create Facebook bots uh, for their for their brands very easily. Uh, Botkit is a wonderful resource that allows you to make bots on many different platforms. Um, BotWiki, actually, the the site that I help admin, we have a whole section on tutorials and and bot making tools. Um, and Stefan does an amazing job uh, explaining how to use sites like Glitch, for example, um, which can uh, it's it's almost like it's a it's not quite WYSIWYG, but it's like along those lines of being able to 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 construct uh, the intent of of a bot. Um, so there's there's just endless tools out there, and they're only getting better and easier. Um, I think you know sometimes the hardest part is figuring out like oh where do I host it? How do I get that part sorted out? Or you know what exactly do I want to do? I mean at the end of the day, that's kind of the hardest hardest part is is figuring out what kind of bot you want to create. So not 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 terribly difficult. Uh, you have to have some knowledge for some of them. I'm assuming you have to some knowledge of code. It's not just a no. plug and play or drag and drop, but no. it, it is maybe in some cases. Yeah, there's absolutely tons okay. of drag and drop tools. Um, Bot Libra, the one that I mentioned before, is 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 completely uh, no coding necessary. Um, so it's it's yeah, there's there's tons of stuff out there that a completely non technical person could spend a couple hours looking at and and put something online that same day. Um, yeah, absolutely. If you want to get a lot more complicated, um, there's definitely some some coding involved. Uh, you know, whether it's going to be like you know JavaScript or, or Python or, or what have you. There's you know there's there's different different ways of building bots. It depends on the platform and and what you're familiar with. So I just tweeted at your arch uh, or your uh, what we see your alter ego maybe yeah yeah uh, sure so Veronica Bellbot. So I tweet at her and then should I expect so I'm going to get something back if I if I ask the right question or what? You what, will what? probably within the next 24 hours. Okay. I would say I'm going to okay. go look and see what she said recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some interesting um, some interesting stuff out there. But while you're looking that up, let's. Let me, I want to talk a little bit about the bots that are in Skype because these are interesting as well. And I think, you know, Microsoft is controlling some of these and they're actually doing some interesting work when we think about what they're doing with bots. And I really think the bot experiment inside Skype is just to, for them to learn. Like, I don't think they're really any serious about any of these things for the most part, but let me give you some examples. So there's one called Your Face. <laughs> and of course, that's you're not saying that to your friend who just said something and then you're responding back with your face. But um, it, it does provide a frank assessment of, of your face. And so you upload a picture. So you, you bring your most current picture. It will try to guess your age. It will try and guess, I think, mm -hmm. a man or a woman. And then it will try to guess a sentiment about you. Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you whatever? And it gets you some interesting comments back. And so I've just you can just jump into Skype. You enable these bots. And then upload a picture to it, and it actually was. Now I don't know if they're if they're getting some of my info or not on the backside for these bots, but it nailed my age within like a year or two when it. Oh when wow! It, and I was like, well, that was kind of creepy. Like this could put those county fair age <laughs> yeah, right, people <laughs> like out of business, right? You know, yeah. they come up there. But I imagine they could do that in real time as well, right? You could come up. It would do, it would do a snapshot. So there's got to be some interesting data behind the scenes where oh, yeah. like Microsoft's looking at your face. One of the ones I found most interesting though um, is this one called Security Bot by Metacert. And you can grab any link, drop it in there, and then they do some analysis on it if that link is good or bad. And so, you know, in this day of malware and right. ransomware and some of those kinds of things, and you know, I use an I use an antivirus uh, piece of software that will tell me it'll it'll give me that link in advance and say, hey, this is a good one or this is a bad one. But interesting that I could just bring that in and it's going to give me some data around that. And so I kind of yeah. these bots are getting these bots in Skype are getting pretty interesting. Um, the, yeah, I actually yeah, know yeah. the founder of Metacert. Uh, oh, Paul do you? Walsh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Well, it I've used it and it's pretty cool. I mean, you're like, mm, okay, I don't know how often I'm gonna copy and paste a link <laughs> <You know, laughs> yeah. right but you never know yeah exactly but yep. like think about how that technology could be used in other ways or places you know like integrating it into other services and making it more of a an automatic process yeah no right on and and mm -hmm. i think there's a ups bot right which what i really want that ups bot to do is follow me around so that like no matter where i'm at it kind of know again back to presence right i think these bots and maybe you can talk about this a little bit your bot lives inside a application and once i walk away from the application it it doesn't necessarily follow me right it doesn't show right. up in other places 
is there some thought to cross platform making some of these bots cross platform so if i'm not necessarily logged into slack it will find me in other places yeah i think that's probably the goal of of most creators at this point is to to i mean i can't speak for everyone else but to have that kind of omnipresence where you really are like the tool for all of the platforms um they don't make it super easy like frankly and a lot of the platforms just have very different kind of usability stuff or you know times and places where you use it that not every bot is going to fit into um i think that's why there's so much potential for the the amazon echoes of the world and and the series and the cortanas um, because they do tie into so many services in different ways um, and they're on our devices that are with us 100 percent of the time um, kind of riding that top layer of all those other services uh, that make them that that make a lot more sense for them as opposed to some of the other tools out there. And do you, do you also think you mentioned um, notifications earlier? And mm -hmm. notifications are the new email problem, right? In some <laughs> yeah. sense, right? Because we they're just still the same email problem, but they're also in everything else too. Yes. Yeah, no, they are. They've almost <laughs> they've, they've almost amplified. You know, so we used to get notifications when we got every email. Oh my God, I would never it would never end if that you know i've got a lot of those shut off but any any thought or have you th have you thought about this it, with the notification or in the bot space of making sure like there are times when i need to see this the results of this bot mm -hmm. and it, it needs to verify back for me and it will keep trying until it does that is that something that's happening in the bot space so that it i it, it may be an important announcement of some kind that I get. And because I'm overloaded with announcement or because I'm overloaded with notifications, I don't see it after it disappears off of that. So any, any thoughts yeah. in that bot space? Yeah. So we do something kind of to help remedy that a little bit. We, we send recaps. Um, and so you get a, a 24 hour recap on all the kudos that you've sent and received. Um, so if you're off doing something else and, and you miss that you got kudos for some reason, because you're just wiping your notifications without really diving into what they were all about, um, you'll get, you'll get, you'll, you'll get another notification, uh, eventually, uh, kind of putting that to the top, but we also store it all on the back end, So you can go to your, your web version of your, of your page. So you can see everything that's happened over time. Um, but yeah, that's that's a tough that's a tough problem to have. I mean, when people want to shut off, they really want to shut off, and there's not much that I mean. I'm not going to interrupt someone when they're trying to get a good nap in in the afternoon, and they don't want any notifications. Like that's not my place. Yeah. You know, we all deserve to 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 turn off every once in a while at will. Um, so yeah, that's that's it's a tough nut to crack. I think people people know when they want to be offline, and they know when they want to receive information, and you just have to be available when they want it. Yeah, no, I I understand your that need for privacy, and I, I don't know about you, but I never shut off. <laughs> so, I try to, I do, I really try to. <laughs> I'm really bad at it. I'm I'm not gonna lie. People are like, when's the last vacation you took? And I'm like, mm, mm. I don't remember. The what now? <laughs> yeah, a vacation. What is that kind of thing? But no, I I, I take plenty. But um, you know, you can always shut that off. I'm just kind of I'm kind of wondering, like, I need help getting the most important notifications to the top. Yeah. And yeah. it kind of knowing it kind of, it, it could kind of know what I need to see and when I need to see it. And for, I can kind of prioritize yeah. those. And I, I think we're getting there. My email client kind of does that. I use spark and it, yeah. it prioritizes emails that it thinks are most important to me. And it's usually right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think over time it gets better. Mm -hmm. The hard part is when it's wrong, then you never trust it again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we have no, a very, very narrow window of opportunity with these kinds of decision yeah. making. Um, Veronica, we usually go a little bit over an hour, but I don't want to keep you any more than that. When we think about anything else we missed, when we think about bots that like would be important for, for some people who are starting to think about them, anything else in there we missed? Um, I mean, there's probably tons that we we didn't yeah. get to. There, yeah. it, it's such a young industry, and there there's so much yet to be done and and changed and and learned from. Uh, and people are still figuring out how we want to use bots. Um, I think they're they're really there to make our lives easier. Um, it, it comes sometimes at the cost of, of more notifications. And we are as designers trying to figure that out and try to minimize that kind of impact and, and give the most valuable information at the right time rather than overloading people with with notifications and, and unvaluable information. Um, so it's 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 still we're still in the early stages. And, and we are even though we're trying to make a business out of it, still figuring it out too. And that's kind of half the fun for me is is learning from from people's early 
experiences and, and putting that into product. Um, so yeah, long way to go, but it's, it's, it's an exciting and fun and, and really interesting space right now. Yeah, no, it is. It's it's very cool. So if if folks after hearing this uh, want to get in, to see more of what you're doing at Growbot.io, but mm -hmm. w what kind of options are there? I mean, how do they get? Is it is a matter of contacting if they wanted to say they use Slack and they wanted to do this recognition stuff? How how they get involved with you guys and how would that work? Oh, just head to yeah, head to growbot.io. We're launching a new website like next week. So I, I almost wish we had done this like a little bit later. <laughs> so I mean, if you're so inclined and you still remember like next week or so, we're gonna have a fresh hot new website. Um, but at growbot.io, just hit the add to Slack button or the add to Microsoft Teams button and hit me up on intercom. I am the intercom person. So if you wanna chat more about Growbot, my little face will pop up and it'll say, hello, I'm so excited you're here. Let's talk about Growbot. <laughs> And I'll answer any of your questions. Ago, actually. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, yeah, that's me. That's literally me. It comes right to my phone. I probably shouldn't tell people on the podcast that I do not do it during off hours as much as possible. So between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., I'm here for your robot questions. <laughs> that specific time. You know, yes. Veronica, you and I share very similar problems in that you've got customers all over the world, and mm -hmm. so do I. You try to be there for them. I think, you know, you're, you're a self-admitted, I can't let a red notification sit on my phone. And That's I'm right. with you on that. And it's a crazy life we live. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have, uh, you know, I followed your public stuff, but I wouldn't have known and uh, without this interview that you share in that same crazy, I've got to communicate with people all the time and be a part yeah. of it. So thank you for encouraging me that I'm not alone <laughs> in that space. And uh, people often are like, well, so when are you off? And, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. well... When I go to sleep about midnight and I wake up about six, those are the you know those are the kind of the hours. Uh, yeah. that Veronica, thanks for your time. Great connecting with you. It's a of it's course. a privilege to be able to talk to you. I've watched you tons uh, over the over the last five or six or seven years. It seems like you've been out there for a long time. You know, those are like for podcasters. Those are like dog years because it seems like we've been out there way longer. Dude, but, I yeah. I've been podcasting now for twelve years. Yeah. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy to think? And you guys, you were part of the pioneering group, I think, right? That mm -hmm. was doing a very early 2005, 2006, 2007. Pre, almost right? pre-iTunes. Yeah, pre-iTunes. Yeah. No, it would have been, I think, mm -hmm. some of the early stuff that you were doing. And and so for us, I started uh, 2007, 2008. Uh, thanks for paving the way uh, for us, by the way. You guys did a lot of stuff to think like, hey, this could be done this way. And I don't think you guys ever thought that you were pioneering anything. It's just you had the technology to do it. You wanted to communicate that stuff out there and you guys did a great job of doing it. So, so thanks. Oh, for thank you. That. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was really, I was listening to things like the Mac cast and, and Adam Curry's sort daily source code and Chris Perillo. And those guys for me are, are still like, you know, they, they made me think, Hey, I have a, I have this audio degree. I love technology. What could I possibly do with that? Oh, podcasting fantastic yeah. so it's it's been a it's been a really wild ride and it, it's so fun to get to see it go so mainstream and, and bring so many new people into the fold looking for new shows like yours and like mine and it's it's been a wild ride and for this launch that you have going on the super secret mm -hmm. project how what's the best way to find Find out about that and when. All right. So I, I, I don't know exactly when we're going to announce. I would imagine it would be within the next 10 days or so. Um, the show is going to go live on June 26th. Um, it's with a big brand that you've all heard of. Uh, it's going to be all about the internet. I'm really excited about it. And that's all I can say. But I, I'm doing all the pre-production now. And it's going to be unlike anything I've done before. Cool. We wanted to get at you. We're not, we're not that kind of podcast. <laughs> we're not a scoop. So yeah, we're look at my a scoop Twitter. Podcast. Twitter. Twitter. I'm at Veronica on Twitter. Yeah, it'll all be yeah, there. It's good. And at what was the, what was the uh, that your alter ego on there? It she is, is at Veronica Bellbot. Yeah. And I just followed her. Not a ton following that. I I, I thought there would be a few more on that, I mean, but she, no, she's. I don't promote her very okay. much. <laughs> I never tweet about her. I don't talk about her, um, except on really like esoteric podcasts and stuff yeah. like that. My but audience she, will appreciate that, by the way. They 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 like these kind of niche, niche, nerdy, geeky things like this. So. Pretty yeah, cool. she writes things like she wrote to me. She wrote to BotWiki randomly, like like not even it didn't write to her first, and she just said, "Do you like Veronica?" 
and bought wiki <laughs> probably stefan was like yes of course and i was just like what wtf yeah. like, what so like why are you talking about me like get out of here that is kind of scary when the bots take over right this is how it starts oh it'll yes. just be more funny when the bots take over she, she's skynet we'll, we'll, yeah we will have uh we'll have more fun well uh ken had one in the chat room are we going to talk about podcasting gear not tonight ken no we, we, uh, <laughs> that's just topic for another day i can go well, just I've as had, long on that i've had other podcasters on and it defaults to that and then i get my listeners who say hey look i don't listen to you to hear you talk about podcasting gear. Do like, you want me to you know? do it real fast? Yeah, do it real fast. All sure. right. Let's do it. Hi, LPR 40 is my microphone. I use an Alesis 8-track uh, USB mixer. Uh, mixer. Everything goes in through there. Um, I edit everything in Audacity. Nice. Um, my nice. favorite tool is Levelator, which is a uh, an amazing compression normalizing levelating tool. Uh, open source has been out forever. And I um, use Auphonic. I'm on the okay. other side. So that's the, that's the one I use. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, what else do I got out there? Earbuds? Any Earbuds? Special? Um, Just regular? These are Bose, um, okay. but I also have, I, I like Shure. My, my big boys are, are the Shure um, nice. SRH 840s yeah. uh, that I've had for, for many, many years. Very worn out. Um, and that's pretty much that's it. It's, it's a very simple setup, and it has worked for me for a long time. That's awesome. Well, tell Joe. Thomas, I said thank you for. I will. It, it's a real pleasure to have you on, and uh, and tell him I said hi. I, I I desperately need to get out to the Bay Area and see him again. He's just the most fun. And come hang out with us on the stoop, have a drink, oh, go to a Giants game. No, you know. totally. I may come out just to do that with you guys. That would be, that would be pretty fantastic. So tell Joe I said hi. Tell him I'll, I'll get in touch with him. And, uh, and appreciate his uh, his recommendation. So thanks, Veronica. We will let you drop. Mike and I will finish up the show. So thanks for coming on. It was great having you. Thanks for all your wonderful questions, you and from the audience. It was a, it was yeah. a real blast. Thanks. Good luck on your launch. Thanks. Bye. Okay. See you. All right. Super sweet. That is awesome. Love it. Yeah. No, a ton of fun. Uh, from a bot standpoint, Mike, when you think about what you learned tonight, yeah. change anything for you? Are you going to you going to check out anything different on bots? You're going to maybe, maybe engage more in that conversation than, than you would have, or maybe look for something different? Yeah. Well, what it does is it makes me want to kind of look into, you know, so when you work for a very traditional firm like KPMG, you know, technologies and stuff like this, and you deal with a lot of confidential information, the opportunities for those sorts of bots aren't as evident as they would be in other firms. But I think it's one of those things of when you really see the value in them, you can start to bring it up. And I think as as our generation kind of moves up the ranks and we kind of and talk about these things, they're, they're conversations that should be had. Like, hey guys, like there are some really cool innovation that we could do if we did X, Y, Z, right? If yeah. we if we enable this on these platforms. So it's kind of fun to talk about because it's, to be honest, <laughs> to be totally honest, when we started talking about bots, uh, when we talk about bots, we're talking about something completely different, like automated audits and things like that. So really almost, almost where it's the machine learning automation side of things. Um, so bringing in this side of bots is interesting. It's a whole different conversation that that we could have, but also, you know, just the, I think your, your ask of the audience right in the chat room to, Hey, let's give my kudos. And then they all did it and it made me feel really good. Okay. Kind of yeah. cool. Right. It's a perfect use case. You kind of see how it would, it would yeah. feel pretty cool. Well, they're solving human problems on the side of bots. Like your your look at bot is a numbers, let's uh, financials. Hey, right. alert me! Alert me! I mean, it really is a kind of a blend of of BI, right? That was always the yes. promise of business yep, intelligence, exactly. right? They would alert you and notify you, but those alerts don't come in the form of reports or PDFs or even emails. They come into your messaging service. Or they find you. They track you down. And then they give you a chance to interact with them, right? So, hey, I got these numbers. Well, so what? What does that mean? This is where Watson is really killing it is because right. Watson's telling you why. So it's not just saying, hey, something's broken. It's saying something's broken and here's why it's broken because we're predicting this part is going to break in three days, right. right, or whatever. And so you know, whether it can really do that or not, I think, but I think we're getting closer to that, right? Yeah. So there's that business case, business rules, those kinds of things where this data is being inputted and you're getting that machine learning kind of going exactly. on. Exactly. And we've actually teamed with IBM Watson. So we are, that's a big part of our initiative. Um, we kind of, we deem it digital labor, right? It's yeah. so this whole digital labor initiative, um, teaming Great. up with 
uh, with IBM Watson involving it in traditional audits. You think of something that is traditionally thought of as boring as accounting work and auditing uh, and really having large advances in it in the next few yeah. years and, and how the whole process works. Well, thinking of thinking about that bot, watching your numbers, and if things exactly. don't, uh, things are getting out of norms or whatever, it could let you know in in, a, in kind of faster, um, in in ways you're where you're paying attention. You know, yep. uh, Veronica mentioned that getting out of that state. You know, we're shifting states all the time, and so if you're in a tool being productive, and it can it can give you that information in the tool, that's awesome. I think the harder problem is her problem, which is the 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 human problem of getting the human yeah. interaction and what does that mean and what kind of what kind of problems need to be solved with this they're just scratching the surface on this recognition stuff our numbers show that that if you're doing recognition and you're doing right they have some numbers on their website by the way that has a real effect on profitability i mean it's it's really about the numbers and cents and if you are recognizing people on a regular basis in 7 days is that key they're they're kind of tied into this piece and i tell you what gallup would love to have is a strength spot where people could come in and talk and get information. Hey, so tell me about a ranger. And that bot would kick back some information and, and help people know and understand those things. You don't have this gallery. Right. Yeah. We're, we're working on an app for Alexa, which is kind of cool where you can, you can oh, see really? those kinds of things. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's in, it's in beta, probably super secret. I probably wasn't supposed to say anything, but, um, nobody, N nobody out there. Well, well but, but what about even okay? So I'm thinking of Strengths Finder, and I think of the 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 test that you take. What do you call those? Yeah. The questionnaire, yeah. whatever. Assessment. It's mm -hmm. The assessment. Strengths Finder assessment. Yep. What if instead of sitting down, taking the time to do an assessment, you basically had a conversation, right. and it was a little bit more conversational? It might take out a little bit of the you know like ooh, because people people their guard might be down a little bit if they're just having a conversation instead of really you know, picking between one or two. So something maybe where it changes the whole game on how you even do the assessment in the first place and find those strengths. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, no, maybe so. There's some interesting things there. And If you and me were talking and you were just asking me those yes or no questions, I wouldn't have the same reaction as when I'm you know, doing it sitting on the computer. So. Yeah. No, right on. I'd be, That's I'd be the way, way we used natural, to do it, right? Actually, yeah, we used exactly. to do that with oh, people. Really? <laughs> yeah. Is that where it all started from? Yeah, it was people. Gotcha. People asking the questions, and then you would you'd score them, and and then there was paper, you know, and you you take right. it on paper, and it's gone through a whole bunch of iterations over the years. You know, there's forty years of research into that crazy strength finder assessment that we I do. I did not know it was okay. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot that Don Clifton spent a lot of time on that assessment. And okay. So it's, it's um it's super interesting, but. You're right. I mean, the the bots can be a way. And really, I mean, th this isn't a new idea, right? These bots are just refined and they're done inside these channels uh, that we're paying attention to. Right. And so, you know, with IBM Watson, there's they're, they're not dropping stuff in Slack. You're getting some kind of email or something from Watson that's saying, hey, you need to pay attention to this because it's, it's about to go down. Or right. um, you need to optimize this because you're making a ton of money in this right now. You should think about you know, putting, putting your foot on the gas even more. I think there's some great, there's some awesome things there that can be done. Um, all right. Well, there's, there's our bot discussion. I think if you're, uh, if you're listening to this and you haven't checked out bots, the easiest way to do that, Veronica mentioned some great sites to go to, but uh, jump on windows 10 and, and open up the, the, the native version, the windows 10 version of Skype. They're all there. And I think actually they're in all the versions, to be honest with you. Um, if you have a modern version of Skype, and you're going to have to have it. They're shutting down some of the old services with Skype, and you're going to have to upgrade. They're, they're getting a little aggressive about that. But that bot section is there. Check them out. They're pretty interesting. Mike, I turned on a, a sports notification. I think it's an SI app. And you can it says, what team do you want to follow? And you, I put the Kansas City Chiefs. And every time there was a news article about the Kansas City Chiefs, it would pop into my Skype and doop, with the link. Super proactive about the team yeah. that I wanted to follow, right? Very nice. You know, and that's nothing more than the alert. Again, we were doing this. I remember I, when I had a pager, this is awful, 1998, I had a pager and you could subscribe to those kinds of services and it would send you pages with that scores, updates, those kinds of things. Um, but there is some sophistication that's coming with it. It's more than just a response, right? There's some sophistication right. coming and, with some of these advanced spots. And Veronica put it perfectly because when you just mentioned that, I'm thinking, okay, why didn't, why wouldn't I just open my ESPN app? But when she's talking about at the very beginning of our conversation, she talked about switching your attention 
back and forth, right? So um, if I'm spending my time in like, let's say Skype for business and I'm talking to people and that's, yeah, I to switch and look to my phone or even to go and open Chrome and go to ESPN or something like that for even a notification to pop up on my phone takes your attention away. You've switched trains of thought. So if it's all coming into one stream, I think that's really, that's where I see the benefit of bots. If it's already where you're at, where you're spending a lot of time, uh, it's fantastic. So yeah. for me, if, uh, if there were bots in Excel, that would be amazing because <laughs> I spend a lot of time in Excel. <laughs> yes, you do, my friend. Yeah. Yes, you do. I, I, I won't be surprised that in, in you know coming years that we'll have more of this interacting with us and yeah. we're gonna have to figure out how to control it like just you can't do a steady steam of it's a steady stream of consciousness you just no. can't you just can't you're gonna it's got to be it's got to be narrowed down we're just getting hit with way too many things and um and i like that i mean people i mean i love the constant bombardment while we've been talking i've gotten work stuff that's been coming in <laughs> and i've left it but i can't wait to get to it like right. i'm like oh oh i can answer that question you know whatever and, um, and I get, I constantly get emails from people are like, do you ever, you know, like I'll answer questions 1230 at night, you know, and be, they'll be like, I didn't expect this till the morning. So <laughs> maybe you should be sleeping. Right. Uh, but, but, uh, I enjoy doing it. Well, um, yeah, huge kudos to, to Veronica for coming on tonight. That was a big interview. Really appreciated having her on. And again, it's kind of, it's great. I watched her do a whole bunch of that media stuff back you know, six, seven, eight years ago now, I think like that. And, and, uh, kind of fun to have her on and see her doing that kind of stuff. So Veronica, again, thanks for yeah. coming on. And I'm a huge nope. DTNS fan. So I'm so, but that was a lot of fun because her and Tom are just amazing. So, yeah. And I haven't listened mm -hmm. to that in a while. I think maybe I need to go back to it and, yep. um, and Perfect. those guys, it's a great show um, over there. Only so many hours in the podcasting day. <laughs> it's very true. And, and, uh, so, so, uh, good. I haven't heard Tom Merritt in a while, so it may, it may be good, to, to get back in on that. Well, remind everyone, if you want to support the show, uh, Amazon affiliate link over there is working again. I believe I just got paid 86 cents. So thank you <laughs> for, it takes a couple months for that to catch up by the way. So right. no, it was just fun. It was like, I saw my earnings report 86 cents. Well, okay. We got a ways to go guys. And, <laughs> uh, and so, but we'll, we'll turn that back into the average guy tech scholarship fund. And uh, as soon as uh, it take a couple months for that to build up, many of you have been using it. So thanks for, <coughs> excuse me, thanks for getting that done. Uh, also remind you, if you want to join us on Patreon, that's another easy way to do it. And uh, you can just jump in the Patreon link, a buck or five bucks or whatever, anything between one and five, whatever you want to do. You just can't do a quarter or 50 <laughs> cents, dollars a minimum. To do that, we'd appreciate you on, on Patreon. Head out to theaverageguy.tv slash support or just Look in the right-hand side. Those two links are right there. Try to make it super easy for you and try to stay within the rules. Don't forget, you can send me an email if you want, and I love to chat about this stuff. Send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. As much as I bashed email tonight, and then I right. said you can still send me an email. Uh, but that's a great way. Twitter's another great way to, to contact me if you want to do it that way. At Jay Collison is the way to do it. Don't forget the theaverageguy.tv platform, both web and media hostings, powered by Maple Grove Partners. Let me say thanks to you guys as well, to you, the listener, because... Christian uh, Skyped me this early this week. He said, Jim, I don't know what you're doing, but we've just added a whole bunch of customers to the Maple Grove platform. So thank you guys for hearing that. I'm the only one advertising, so it's got to be coming from me and or from the site and from Christian's work here. And so thank you for supporting Christian and what he what he does. See, they're not making any money off that thing, but it's a great service for Christian to learn on and to work with, and he's such a great guy. Plans start as little as 10 bucks, so you can head out there, maplegrovepartners.com. And then, and then don't forget, we want to thank LastPass for their sponsorship, what they do in the mobile app as well. I pinged Amber. We're going to try and get her back in early July to be a part of what we're doing here. And um, and so we're looking at getting that done. Don't forget, John Biggs, uh, back next week. I shouldn't say back. First time. We're gonna And we're going to talk about Slack. I'm sorry, not Slack, but Plex. There we go. And Mike, some cool stuff going on with Plex right now. Those guys are kicking. Yeah. Yeah. And I think even if you if we wait a week, we might even see a little bit more. I know. Open. I know. I think this will be a great time to have the conversation. If you have not jumped into Plex now, I think now is the time. And they're it's they've got some cool stuff coming up with live TV, and we've seen it on Android. I mean, we've seen it on the iPhone. We're going to see it on Android shortly. Yep. Um, I think it's going to come to Windows here pretty quick. And uh, and uh, I think I'm in. I think this is it. I think 
I think I'm looking for. So John's coming on. We're going to talk about some of that. And of course, Mike, you've been doing that as well. And then the week after, special guest Shauna, uh, Shauna Dorsey is coming on to fill your seat just for a week. And it looks like you're going to be here more often than we thought. So that'll yeah. be great. But Shauna's coming on. Aaron Lawrence is coming back. So we're excited to have Aaron back and we're going to talk about some cool stuff. Aaron's great. I'd I could have Aaron on every other week and she's, <laughs> she's doing some great stuff. So she's a great interview. So we'll have her as well. And then Mike, I just booked Mark and Mike to come back for the, for the big grill barbecue show. Yes. Yes. Is that around 4th so, of July? Then that'll be a well, it's going to be the 20th, 20th of July, right in the middle oh, of the summer, right in the heart summer. of the summer. Yeah. Perfect. Heart of the summer. So those guys are coming back on uh, July 20th. So, Got some great shows. A couple of you new this week, Ryan. I don't think uh, I think you're new this week, and uh, Scott. I think you were new this week as well. Gavin, you might as well. I don't know, Gavin. Have you been out before? I I, I thought I saw your name before, but this, maybe not. But uh, Peter, Mike, Ken, uh, and Gibby as well. I've never. I, I don't think I've seen before. So guys, thanks for coming out tonight. I know we yeah. changed the time on you, and I appreciate it. Uh, um, Rennie, it was great to see you. Uh, uh, Peter, great to see you. Mike Howard and Ken as well. So, guys, thanks for jumping out. You did a great job of uh, of being great in the chat room. And uh, uh, Gavin says, "LOL, adding the barbecue show to my calendar now." You should and listen, Gavin. Our barbecue show that we did last year, the most popular show of the year, and it's all about tech and barbecue and grill. It was super good. And if we could figure out a way to get Aroma to come through the speakers, <laughs> it would be even that much more popular. It was good. These That's guys, are, mean, yeah. yeah, these guys are kicking when yeah. it comes to when it comes to barbecue and grill. So, um, so uh, Gibby says no. He's been around since the home server show days. So oh, great. Nice. Thanks for. Thanks for hanging out and, and for being around. Appreciate you guys and what you do. We're live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern. Every week we're out here, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern at theaverageguy.tv slash live. And stuff. this week we changed it a little bit. It's, it's Mike, it's 1120 in the Central time zone. How you, how you doing? You okay? I'm, I'm actually getting my second win, so I don't even know if I'm going to go to bed after this. Yeah, I'm going we'll, like to we'll, stuff done. We'll wind down post-show pretty quick, but uh, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, averageguy.tv slash live. With that, we'll say goodnight, everybody. I've been struggling with a cold. And, oh, uh, really? And so my voice is starting to go. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, yeah, we can wrap up tonight because it's pretty late. But um, down there where you're at in the in the man cave down there, is it pretty sound isolated? So when you're talking, does Hannah hear you? Uh, I'm on the main the floor. Okay. So, so can we're she on... hear you? Uh, yes. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Not not from our bedroom, but okay. she, she so she can sleep sleep on the couch in the living room until I come out, uh, and then. No, we'll make the trip oh, over. So, oh, that's yeah. right. Young couple. That's so nice. Wow. And then, but Emmett, so that wall, the TV's on, on the opposite side of, on the opposite of that wall is uh, his nursery. So Emmett actually can hear me probably the best of anyone, but Emmett he doesn't wake up. Right so, yeah, he does. He's a heavy sleeper. It's awesome. That's good. Yeah. So. You know, at that age, most of the time they are, you know, right. you can make a whole bunch of noise and they're, all they want to do is eat, poop, and sleep. Yeah. You know, right. pretty happy and pretty content at that point. It, he's eight months, right? Eight or nine months. He's seven. Seven months. Oh, seven and a half. Probably. So you got you still have a little. They, they get to be they get to be one or two, and they they get to be a little bit of a hand. Right. So well, and hope we're gonna finish the basement. So hopefully, and I said my one requirement is that I have a tiny space to do this sort of stuff uh, that's not in a guest room or anything. So. <laughs> yeah. My what a crazy name. so tonight what a crazy uh revelation to find that my buddy joe thomas was in the middle of i was this. gonna ask you about that so did you so i've joe i've known joe for about 10 years and he's an oracle okay. guy how did she and, know joe uh she's in a book club she's in a sci-fi she just book randomly club knew to joe. ask him about you or what um i think so th i think they um i think she must have said hey i got this request from this guy jim collison huh uh, for for you know whatever because it took right. her a week or so to get back to me oh well, yeah I mean, i'm sure she gets a ton of those requests oh too. yeah oh, are you kidding me yeah totally and so she must ask joe jo and joe is just a good guy i mean i just love joe he's he is your he is he is awesome joe is a great guy and he he knows wine he knows wine joe knows wine oh, and, my yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's just he is just a great guy. I just love. I've had him out to Omaha several times to speak at uh, Oracle user group conferences and those kinds of things and we've enjoyed some nice meals here in town on Oracle, which was which is great. Um 
so but but funny that she knew him and uh so it's that's just that's that's how the way the world works man that a little good karma tonight you know exactly Guest five uh, eight fifty four. Looking forward to the Plex discussion about an uh, an Onbox Pro after your show. Great to watch you. Mine is sitting around here somewhere. Mine's right here. I was actually just going to plug in though. So. Oh yeah, I got I got it right here. Boom. Yep. There it is. It's a little dusty. It's a little dusty. There we go. <laughs> it's been sitting there. I I need to use it more than I than I do. But we should get those guys. I should ask those guys if they got anything new and get them back on. Definitely. Um, to talk about. It. Um, what was I going to say? Cut you off. Oh, Ryan had mentioned in the chat asking if we had any thoughts about a meetup and cause he's from Wichita apparently and oh. could come up for the, yeah, we need to do a low maintenance meetup here where I, I can't do a full, I can't do a Dave McKay meetup where it's all weekend and oh, yeah, that no. kind of deal, but, but yeah. Wichita's right around. I mean, I've been to Wichita quite a few times. I just, if yeah, maybe we could do a day here. I would love to keep it in Omaha. Yeah. Brian was saying that. Yeah. Brian, Brian I actually used to play uh Cape in, was it Cape in Mount Carmel? Is that in Wichita? We played them in soccer. Uh, a lot of stuff back in high school. Went out there a few times. Well, yeah, Dave, this will be the last year of the home server show meet or the, yeah, what we call the home server show meetup in Indianapolis. He's going to do one more and then call it quits. And he was like, Oh, really? Is he calling quits on podcasting? No. Or just a meetup? Just a meetups. It's a ton of work. He puts a ton. His meetups are second to none. That guy. Money too. Yeah. He's, but they're just, they're great. He is that dude. It's pro. What he does is pro. I couldn't even come close. I need to go this year. This is the last year. I know. I gotta go. No, he's. I, I think the. And I. I'm. Not, I don't think I'm gonna. I. It, oh, you're not going to. No. Never no. Mind. I. Well, I just. It's just I'm not gonna be like schedule. Is just it's just nuts right. this year, and I got so much going on. I got called for jury duty. Did I tell you that? Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about it right, right as she was hopping on in the pre-show. Yikes! So the that's best part about being a lawyer. Uh, that's true. You, you have to go, but then you know, they're like, I'm like, I got my lawyer. Like, no, nope, nope. We'll cut. No, <laughs> you can go. We don't want you here. You know too much. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's um. So it it comes right in the middle of the summit. You know, we got this big. We got a thousand people coming to Omaha for this Clifton Strength Summit. Right. And I got some big parts in it. And yeah, you can't get away during that then. And then so I today I was filling out the the um the questionnaire and i was there they do they're like if you if if you need to delay this when would be a better month and they actually ask you oh really and so yeah i was like can we delay this to october i that would be october would be way better i have a little bit of a lull you know i have two lulls in my schedule one in august and one in um october okay. but this this year i'm flying out for podcast movement so that august doesn't work September is my busy travel season, and then by the time I get to October, most of the most of the career fairs and stuff are over, and so um, I'm not traveling as much. But so I'm hoping they'll delay it. Yeah, or just go in there and act really biased. <laughs> well, the problem isn't it's a murder case. I getting, love killers. Yeah, <laughs> the problem is not getting <laughs> dismissed for one day. I I kind of need to. I kind of need kind of needs to be guaranteed that I'm not oh. going to get right and. And um, they can call you back multiple times, and you have to call in every day. And yeah, you know, it's just uh, it's just a pain. And it's, hey, you know what? It's part of being an American. So it's part of living in a free country. Yeah, you, you need to do jury duty. You so do. I'm not complaining, but it's um, eh, just came in a really bad time. So, all right, guys, uh, Mike, hang tight. If you listen to the chat room, we're going to cut it off because it's freaking late yeah. here. And uh, although. Typically, I'm just starting to think about going to bed. So I don't, I don't know why I'm. Um, I don't ever get in bed before midnight. But um, guys, if you came out live, thanks for coming out. Great chat room tonight. Appreciate you guys uh, being out there. Don't forget, I'm uh, for Patreon subscribers, pre and post show. Now this week, not a lot in either one of those. But if you're a Patreon subscriber, I am putting the pre and post out on Patreon where you can get access to it. So if you're currently a Patreon subscriber out there you can uh, just run out to Patreon and look in my feed 
and you'll see the YouTube videos. I've hidden them so you can't find them, but you can find them on Patreon if you want to watch the pre and post show. They're out there and available for you. Um, but thanks for coming out tonight. Appreciate it. Maybe, Mike, we should think about every once in a while for our West Coast and Australia friends. Going go a little later. Tonight. Yeah. I don't know. Quick, quick survey in the chat room. For those of you who came out tonight, who came out because it was two hours later? They'll take it. Probably a lot of Veronica. 20, well, she was a huge draw. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, nobody's come to see us. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we can listen my... to you two without looking at your faces. <laughs> <laughs> and if that's an option, we're all going to choose that. <laughs> we choose option B because you guys are ugly. <laughs> like, man, you guys have a face for radio. Yeah. Yeah, Gavin says he came out for Veronica. I, yep. I'd imagine too. Yep. So did I uh, guess eight fifty four? No, no. I guess the question. <clears throat> yes, yeah, guess eight fifty four came out because it was two hours later. Wasn't if you came out for Veronica or two hours later. The question was, and I didn't state it very well. Was it easier to come out because it was two hours later tonight? That's kind of the the time works, Scott. Good. Yeah. Well, maybe um to get. Uh, well, it's easier for Peter. Peter's in our time zone, but he's working late. So I wouldn't do it every week, but, uh, but we may have to think about um, maybe as we do more California, we, we give them the option and we start at, you know, eight their time and 10 here. I mean, would you be open to that every other month or so? Yeah, sure. Be open to that. Okay. Late actually, it almost works better for me because Hannah will go to sleep at the same time, no matter what. So I actually get a little bit more time with her before she goes to bed. And then I come in here because I stay up late anyway. So for me, it actually late works best. Okay. Well, I, I use the time to schedule a bunch of guests. Well, there we so go. So that was one we're of both night owls. So that works. No, no, totally. And I'm going to, I'm going to go back to work here when we're done. Yep. Chat room. Thanks for coming out, Mike. Hang on tight one for yep. a second. Chat room. We'll see you later.